Today on Upfront, are gas taxes and vehicle fees going up in Wisconsin? Next, the big new plan to pay for road building and repair. Are lawmakers and the governor likely to approve it? It's my conversation today with Republican Senator Alberta Darling and Democratic Senator John Erpenbach. Then, the latest on plans for a new arena for the Milwaukee Bucks. One of the leaders of the effort, Tim Sheehy, on where things stand right now. And what insiders are saying about reports that Governor Walker is planning to run for president. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Up Front with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Up Front. We all like to gripe about the condition of the state's roads and bridges, but how would you feel about paying more in taxes and fees to repair and rebuild them? The State Department of Transportation is asking for an additional three quarters of a billion dollars over the next two years to improve our roads and bridges. Where would that money come from? Well, possibilities include a five cent per gallon increase in the gas tax, 10 cents a gallon for diesel fuel, a one time fee which would add hundreds of dollars to the cost of a new vehicle, and hybrid and electric car owners would be charged an extra $50 a year. The DOT says it's a broad based approach to addressing a $680 million shortfall in the coming years. But are lawmakers inclined to approve new fees and higher gas taxes? We're asking Republican Senator Alberta Darling, co-chair of the powerful Joint Finance Committee, and Democratic Senator John Erpenbach, who is at our Madison affiliate, WKOW-TV. Thanks to both of you for being with us. I'll begin with you, Senator Darling. Uh, you're the party of no new taxes. We're talking about new taxes, new fees. It could be, for some people, hundreds of dollars. How can your party possibly get behind this proposal? I don't think we can, but we have a transportation problem and a funding problem that we have to address. So it's going to be up to the governor to listen as he is now and, and we are now and come up with a proposal that will fly because we have need to change some of the, the ruts, the potholes, the roads. The 94 has to be completed. The zoo has to be completed. The Hone Bridge has to be completed. But you know what? People want uh, good roads because it's good for jobs, good for public safety, but they don't want to pay for it. That's just the fact. Senator Erpenbach, is there anything in this proposal from uh, Secretary Gottlieb that you could support? Uh, not that I've seen so far. Uh, Alberta's right. We have some issues with our roads and we have an issue with our transportation budget. That's pretty clear. Both sides certainly recognize that and we all acknowledge that. But at the same time, uh, if you're looking at fees on hybrid cars, if you're looking at increasing the gas tax, if you're looking at increasing wholesale fuel costs, and then, in addition to taking out over $500 million of our GPR, our general purpose revenue, we have some real issues with our budget that we need to deal with. Question is, it's going to come from drivers, it's going to come from those buying new cars, it's going to come from those buying gas, but at the same time, where's the rest of the money going to come from? It's going to come, is it going to come from our schools? Is it going to come from other budgets? That, that's the big question that we all have right now. What is acceptable to either one of you in terms of addressing uh, this issue? Well, we need a long-term solution, but as you pointed out, there are just a lot of taxes and fees in this proposal, and that isn't acceptable to the average taxpayer. What the governor has to do and what the DOT has to do is really talk about the needs and communicate about what our options are, right, just to talk about how we're going to fund it is a, is a buzzkill. But if they talk about, well, do you want the zoo to be uh, postponed? Do you want the I-94 to be postponed? You start putting choices on the table of postponing projects. Projects, then, then the discussion becomes more real and people become more interested in how are we going to fund it. But, you know, we've kicked the can down the road for a long time. And actually, Governor Doyle rated the transportation budget for other items. And that has been a real uh, challenge to us to how to figure out how to s sustain a good transportation program and do it in a way that meets our taxpayers' uh, needs and priorities. Senator Erpenbach, give me an example of something you could support that would help us deal with this uh, shortfall? Well, I want to address something that Senator Darling just said. Governor Doyle did borrow from the transportation fund bonded to pay it back, where uh, Governor Doyle and the legislative Republicans actually, I think, made a mistake, was getting rid of the automatic indexing of the gas tax. Uh, that put us in part in the hole that we're in today. And the, uh, Governor Walker and the Republicans in the legislature, the Democrats in the legislature, have known that this issue has been coming for a long time and we haven't done anything to, to, to actually try and plan for it long term. So here we are right now with some pretty substantial tax increases and fee increases that the Governor's Secretary of Transportation is proposing. All of that being said, we have some real big trouble with our transportation budget. We all know that, but we want what's fair. 
What we did in the last four years is we cut taxes by almost $2 billion. That's money that could have gone to backfill transportation deficit, but we're not doing that. So what can we support? We'll have to see what the governor proposes in the end in his state budget, and we'll take it from there. Let me uh, uh, switch topics here because uh, I, I want to move into an area that, that is likely to get discussion in the new legislature, and that is the, whether or not the state should play any role in the financing of a new arena for the Milwaukee Bucks, for other concerts in downtown Milwaukee. There's been an idea floated uh, that both of you are aware of that, that essentially says uh, we could pay for this thing if the state would bond $150 million. Uh, we've already got money from the new owners, the former owner, Herb Cole, some other investors. They're going to pick up most of the tab, but we need $150 million in bonding, and we can pay that back through the income tax revenues generated by employees of the Bucks and by NBA players. So you don't have to create a new tax. And yet the reception in Madison so far seems to be pretty chilly. Is there any chance that your Republican colleagues can get behind that sort of proposal? I think we have to look at a proposal that the community, Milwaukee, actually puts on the table. Right now, there is no proposal that the leadership in Milwaukee has agreed to. So I think we need an actual proposal before we can just jump to conclusions. I Any wanna, reaction to that idea? I, I think it is a, an, an option. And you know what? Well, we have to look at what happens if the bucks leave and the $10 million won't be there anyway. That, to me, is a, a consideration. And I look at the arena as an opportunity the Bucks, not just for the athletes, not just for the Bucks, but the, the idea of a multi-use facility to, to actually regenerate a lot of activity and excitement and revenues and jobs and for Milwaukee. It would be like if you look at uh, the, the footprint they're talking about, some of those assets like the journal building are really uh, in the offing could be greatly uh, appreciated by the Bucks and the community. If you look at the arena and the Milwaukee Theater, those are, are, are assets that are, are putting a drain on the tax dollar, and we have to look at that. So it's an opportunity to have a vision about what we, where we want Milwaukee to go, how we want to see Milwaukee, how we want to be a, a, a five-star city, and I think it it's optimistic that we have options, and we have a lot of investors. Yep. The investors are truly impressive, and that tells me a lot. John uh, Erpenbach, uh, is there any Democratic support for this idea? I've talked to quite a few Democrats, and they're not big on the idea of any state money being used to support an operation like the Bucks for a new arena. They just don't think that's the right purpose for public dollars. Well, let's face it, Mike. The reason why this is getting a chilly reception is Madis in Madison is because the speaker's made it really clear he doesn't like Democrats, he doesn't especially like wealthy Democrats. Uh, what the speaker had to say, first of all, I think he owes the owners of the Milwaukee Bucks an apology uh, for w it, it walking right up to the line of basically a, a shakedown as far as who the, who the owners choose to back in the presidential race or the governor's race versus what their responsibility is economically to the city of Milwaukee. I think it's great that we have we have people coming in who wanted to buy the box, they bought the box, and now they need a new place to stay. You should take a look at every possible option when it comes to, to, to both public and private funding of a new arena for the Milwaukee Bucks. But at the same time, if you're the owner of the Milwaukee Bucks and you have the highest ranking Republican official outside of the governor in the legislature saying to you, you know, you shouldn't have gone to that fundraiser for Mary Burke. I think it's going to put your funding in jeopardy. What kind of message are we actually sending to those who want to keep business and not only keep business in Wisconsin, but actually develop and grow business in Wisconsin? Well, I, I really do think Robin Voss owns the, uh, owes, owes the owners an apology. Very briefly. Yeah, but Mike, look, let's look at this as an opportunity. And because if the bucks go, we lose the $10 million. And I think we need to get a, a, a solid proposal on the table, and I think we need to really look at it. It's an opportunity. John Erpenbach, final word. To 10 seconds. Uh, is there any Democratic support for this idea? Yeah, there's obviously Democratic support to keep the Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee. After all, that's where, that's where they belong. Senator Cole stepped up when it was time and purchased the Bucks to keep them there. We're, we're open to any and every possibility that is a strong bipartisan vote and as, as a strong bipartisan support in the legislature. All right, Senator John Erpenbach on the satellite from Madison, Senator Thank Alberta Darling here in the studio. Thank Thanks you, for both of you today. You. Appreciate it. Well, we just talked about it, a new arena for downtown Milwaukee. We'll get the latest on how and where it might be built next on Upfront. And coming up later, the most serious signs yet that Scott Walker plans on running for president. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.